Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a new course on two-phase flow modeling in ComSol Multiphysics. In our channel, we already uploaded a few videos on two-phase flow modeling. However, we are initiating this particular series to substantiate few more information and those information may be necessary if you are working with multi-phase flow problem. So today we will be talking about level set method but before we move on to the level set method let us try to understand, let us try to visualize what a two-phase flow is. So two-phase flow means you have two distinct phases and distinct phases means it has first of all it will, it will not be miscible, those two will be immiscible and they will have a particular demarcation line and that demarcation line is called the interface. So this is actually the fundamental of a two-phase flow and how exactly two phases try to mix with each other, how their morphology would be once they meet with a certain velocity, with a certain pressure, all those things we try to solve by this multi-phase flow physics and in ComSol there are two popular physics one is level set and the other is phase field by which we tackle this multi-phase flow. Now let us directly go to the equation which we basically solve in multi-phase flow. So if you want to solve multi-phase flow you have to take set of laminar flow equation and also the level set. So initially let us see what exactly we are solving in level set in laminar flow. In laminar flow what we have? We have a particular momentum balance equation and by now we all know what are the terms signify in this momentum balance equation. This particular term is the convective term or the inertial term. This particular term is your gravity force and F signifies any possible forces that can be that can appear in the solution space based on the physical scenario and this particular term involves two, two basic terms the first one is the divergence of the pressure and this is nothing but the driving force of the flow and another term that is basically the viscous term or the diffusive term we all know because the other term is basically giving the viscous stress. So those are the overall terms which we have in our momentum balance equation and the other equation is continuity equation and we need to solve, we need to always solve these two equations simultaneously because uh, it otherwise the equations will not be consistent that means the degree of freedom will not be met. So we'll talk about this mathematics later on but uh, as of now we just try to understand that we have this set of equations which we need to solve and then we have to solve level set. Now why, why we need level set because in normal single phase flow I mean, I mean wherever you look you have a continuous domain but in two phase what happens I have already simulated it so let us see the picture and it will help me to describe so suppose this the red one is one phase and the blue one is the other phase now what happens these two phases are distinct and the physical properties in the red zone and the blue zone may be completely different suppose we are thinking of the viscosity, we are thinking of the density. So the density here will be completely different from the density where, I mean uh, from the density at this red zone. Similarly, the viscosity may differ drastically. So once I move from this place to this place, what will happen? There will be a sudden jump of the physical properties and, and that is why the function may be discontinuous. Now how to tackle a mathematical problem where we have such a discontinuity that is the heart of this multiphysics or multiphase flow. So how they tackle is, you, if you look at the equation you can understand 
by this level set we actually take care of the interface the interface where actually the jump is taking place jump means jump of the physical properties a, a, a mathematical discontinuous function so if you see this phi is a parameter a dependent variable here which depends on the time and space the space derivatives are coming from this gradient operator you have seen there are multiple gradient operator and this phi is basically solving for the interface now this interface is not a kind of line it, it, it has certain thickness and this thickness determines I mean this thickness will be governed by your physical problem so you uh, based on your physical scenario you may choose the thickness of the interface and uh, in order to understand this level set if we go to wikipedia which i have already opened so you can see basically we are solving for this particular equation where there is a parameter phi and that is a function of space and time and it solves at the interface now what is the value of those this phi parameter at different zones suppose if we have uh, interface and interface so a particular phase so what will happen if you visualize you have a phase then an interface and then another phase so the pro the phi value for one phase has to be taken as zero and the phi value for the other phase say this is the red one so if the red one is zero then the blue one is one okay the value of phi at the blue phase is 1, the value of phi at the red phase is 0 and the value in between that is called the thickness of the interface, it will, it will, it will actually follow a particular function and that could be this particular function and this particular function is given by a heavy seed function and in this video we will not talk more about this function but we will make other video where we'll talk about this discontinuity, how exactly the console or the level set is set up for tackling this interface that we'll discuss. So the take home message is we have two phases. For one phase, the value of phi is zero. For other phase, the value of phi is one. And in between, we, we assume some function. So for today's video, this is sufficient and if you see here also in the level set I'll show you say this one this one is a uh, one particular phase and it is denoted by phi equal to 1 and hence the other phase uh, the this one if we go to initial value 2 that is denoted by phi equal to 0 this is phi equal to 1 so we have defined two different phi values for two different phases and two different materials are taken here if you see uh, this is your water and at this portion we have taken a particular oil so the those are two different phases so this is the initial contact line or initial interface and that and act and this interface is movable because once the fluid comes here this interface will change and this level set will track that interface across the entire solution space based on time and space function so in layman language once the time progresses this interface will change the position and the level set equations will always look at the interface and it will solve for the interface by the differential equation and by the Heaviside function so this is the main thing and the, and what you need to put in COMSOL if you are working with this level set you need to define which one is your interface where exactly you kept your phases if you have two different phases where you have kept phase 1 where you have kept phase 2 which we have already defined by initial values so initial values 1 says that in the entire solution space those are the locations where we have the 
phi equal to 1 phase. Initial value 2 says this is the portion where we have the other phase that is phi equal to 0. Now we have defined an inlet. So we have two inlets. So once you define inlet, you have to tell which fluid is coming from here. So we have defined like fluid 1 is coming from the top. We have also defined that from here fluid 2 is coming and they will go out from this common outlet. So those things are defined in level set. Accordingly in laminar flow we have two similar inlets. Here we define the boundary condition that can be taken as a velocity boundary condition or a pressure boundary condition but your boundary conditions has to be there because uh, otherwise the equation will not be consistent to solve. In inlet 2 again we define the velocity and the phase information that means which material is coming from this inlet. And uh, your inlet 1 and inlet 2 has to be consistent in both the laminar and level set. So once you define all those things then you can actually go for meshing. I am not talking much about it because we have already learned about those uh, steps many times and then uh, you have to solve for a particular time step you should uh, be aware of the time scale as we are working in micrometer domain and this is a very sluggish kind of flow so our time scale will be also very sm I mean smaller time scale that's why uh, we have taken up to a millisecond of solution with an interval of 10 microsecond. So this information, this idea will come from your previous experiences and that's why uh, you cannot choose these values randomly. It depends on your physical time scale. So every time I make a video, I emphasize on this. So anything, whether it is a boundary condition, it's a time scale, length scale, we cannot take randomly because when we solve differential equation, those differential equations are only numerically solvable if we give, I mean, physical information to the numerical problem. If we give absurd information, absurd boundary condition, then you will get convergence issue and your simulation may not run. So I hope in today's video, you have learned about those basic steps of a level set as well as laminar flow what how exactly you, you need to define the entire problem and in the upcoming video we'll talk about the morphologies morphologies means here we can see we have solved for a particular two-phase flow the solution is not good because uh, for the sake of time we have taken a larger mesh but in two-phase flow you should always go for very fine mesh because uh, if, if you have a fine mesh, then only you can track the interface nicely. Otherwise, you will lose information from the interface and you may get erroneous result and that's why it is advisable that you go for a fine mesh. Now, we tried to make droplets out of it, but we could not able because to make droplet, you need to put absolute shear at a particular portion. But this particular arrangement may not be enough to give a critical shear force so that it tears into a new, I mean, distinct droplet so that we could not give. But in upcoming videos, we'll talk about it, how to create droplets, why droplets are created, how in microfluidics we continuously generate droplets. So those simulations we'll be covering in this particular series. And from a research perspective, this series will be very much helpful. So do subscribe to our channel and follow us. And we hope our videos will be helpful. Thank you.